Cheltenham Festival coverage on Off The Ball. With Boyle Sports. Epic. Cheltenham. 18 plus gamble responsibly. See gamblingcare.ie. Now, John Duggan has been covering Cheltenham for us across the week. John, Willie Mullins on the final day of the festival. What is it? Five winners last year. Wins the Gold Cup again. Back to back years this year as well. Seems to be just something special about the Friday and Willie Mullins at Cheltenham. Ah, yes, but he's the best trainer, Will, and good evening to you. Uh, he's the best trainer. He's had 94 Cheltenham Festival winners now. Took him a long time to assert the dominance, but once he has in the last 10 to 15 years, he's got all the best owners, but that's all well and good. You can see with football clubs like Manchester United and Everton, they might have all the money that they can splash on things, but you need to have the right people in charge. And I asked Willie Mullins kind of after the race, what what's the team like here? And he was uh, talking about Galapon de Chance, who won the Gold Club, his work jockey in that, because... I suppose Willie Mullins is the Alex Ferguson, Paul Tennant is the Roy Keane, and then you've all the supporting cast as well. So I think a big shout-out needs to go to everybody down there in Close Sutton and Carlo for the work they do every single day to prepare these horses. They've got a mind of their own, the horses, they don't talk. So you're putting it in the lap of the gods to agree. And to come to Cheltenham, have disappointments like Fast Hall Vega, the very first race in the opening day, was the hero of Cheltenham last year in so many ways. But to end up with the week with six winners, including the big, the prestigious race, the Gold Cup, on Gallop and Deschamps is pretty special. Yeah, we'll hear from connections around Gallop and Deschamps in a moment, but I'm just taking AP McCoy's comments directly after the race. He was asked about Paul Townend, who was incredibly patient, uh, held him back, and in the end it was a seven-length victory. AP McCoy said, as brilliant a ride as I've seen in any race. And when asked to clarify, do you mean Cheltenham? He said, no, any race I've ever watched. That was a masterpiece from Paul Townend. Well, that is something to say for AP McCoy. I don't think he's really a person who gives you hyperbole every day of the week. So for him to say that is pretty... And he, like, he'd know more than anybody else because of the amount of thousands of winners that he had. So when I watched it, like, it was just ice cold. It was He brought his A game in the championship race. And it's difficult when you're going over three and a quarter miles over 22 fences when you know you're probably on the best horse in the race but you have to be nervous because there are horses in front of you that could fall a hoy senior did fall and you have to uh, there's a couple of things you have to avoid the traffic but you also have to be on the inside because it had rained so much in recent days will that the best ground the fresh ground was on the inside of the track and that's generally where paul tannen was so you have to have confidence and belief in yourself that you're on the best horse and not to panic in that regard it would have helped him will that he's won the gold cup twice before an album photo so he knows the drill in terms of what you need to do in terms of finishing and he then produced gallop and Deschamps, who made a mistake three out just perfectly to line up alongside brave man's game over the last two fences and then the horse then just put it to bed over the last fence he's a brilliant jumper he's a more relaxed horse this year he travels so well and then he stayed up the hill. There was a little bit of a question mark because he has been an exuberant racer in the past. Will he stay the extra quarter mile? But the ground did dry out a little bit today. The rain that was forecast did not come and got up on Deschamps was a, a, a quite an easy winner, but Paul Tennant made it look easy. Yeah, when they talk about the hill, just tell us about that from maybe the uninitiated here because that's always the argument around the Gold Cup. Will a horse stay? Will a horse make it up the hill and finish strongly? Uh, today we gallop and Deschamps, you know, meet it at a position where it looks like he was edging towards a win, but there was a very, very strong finish. What is the challenge of the hill? Well, the first thing about it is it looks, uh, it doesn't, it's a bit like the Masters at Augusta. The, ga- the Masters is a much more, Augusta National is a much more hilly course than you see on TV. The Chatham Hill is much more steep than you see on TV. And they've got two courses here, an old course and a new course. The new course is on the inside. It's a more galloping track. It's got a longer run in. So you're, you're talking about a longer run in from the final fence. And like, if you want to be running up that hill every day, you're going to get fit um, because it is, it is punishing. And especially in that ground, it is just like a steep incline. So therefore, some horses just after the end of three miles don't want that. That's why the tactics and the best jockeys like the Rubies and the AP McCoys know that they've got a clock in their head in the race. That they have to conserve energy because if the horse gets too buzzed up and too keen, he will not have energy at the end of the race. And that would be the worry about the likes of Gallup and Deschamps last year, that he fell at the last, and that this year he was a bit more relaxed individual. And that's all down to the work they do at home. And that and then enables him to get up the hill without any issue. As John mentioned, Willie Mullins the stage on to 94 Cheltenham Festival winners. He's closing in on the 100 slowly but surely. Let's hear from Willie Mullins, who spoke to John after the rest. Willie Mullins, it's our national holiday, it's St. Patrick's Day. Yes. What a special feeling. It was, well, we got a special feeling over here anyhow, and um, when Paul 
produced Calvin film uh, as a second last. Uh, you know, that was some feeling the whole way up the street. Past the winning post, the shouts, the roars, the relief uh, that he'd stayed the three and a quarter miles because a lot of people doubted him. And we didn't know, we'd never run him over that trip, but we hoped, and we, we thought he would, but we hoped. So anyhow, huge relief. It was an ice cold ride by Paul, a brilliant ride. Paul is fantastic under pressure, and that was a pressure ride. Right in the favour of the Gold Cup, I t asked him to drop him in behind. You know, so you have to uh, try and miss all the debris, falling horses, whatever happens, horses making mistakes. He did, he just sat, sat, sat. Then the horse made a bad mistake in the third last. He didn't get ruffled, he didn't kick him to, you know, move on up. He just let the horse get his second win back and pulled him together and waited until he had his sights set on the second last fence before he pulled him out to get a clear on the last two and he just timed his run beautifully over the last uh, you know and that's what makes Paul what he is he's just cool as a cucumber you're the manager he's the player but you've also got a great team back in Carlo we have and especially Adam Condy who looks after Gallup and Sean he rides him feeds him grooms him does everything for him and he's huge in the success of this horse because this horse was too free he was too busy and Adam has cooled him down settled him down he does he rides him all his fast work and, uh, you know, I won't let Paul ride the fast work or Ruby or Patrick or David Casey because they'll light him up too much. Uh, Adam just sits on him, keeps him cool, keeps the revs down all the time. So when it comes to the race track, then Paul just has to put the finishing touches. This is a very special race. Your father won it with Don Run back in 1986. This is the Blue Ribbons. This is the one we all want. It is. And, you know, it's great, too, that um, coming from Ireland, we're able to come over here and uh, do something like this. You know, it's great for all our owners, Greg and Audrey. Audrey Turley um, and uh, you know it's fantastic for them to they're, they're not in well Greg is not in horses too long but um, you know to, to have that's his second chat of money I think here and um, you know so uh, it's, it's fantastic to have people like that to train horses for people like that three years ago was a worrying time for everybody it was COVID when Album Photo won the second so you'll be able to celebrate this properly we will. We'll celebrate it in Dublin tomorrow with a double victory, I hope, when, when Ireland take on England. And just to finish, a golden age for Irish racing, six winners for yourself this week. You can never take that for granted. Never. You know, we're very, very pleased what has happened. You know, we brought a huge team over. We had lots of disappointments, but come, coming over here, there's no easy match over here. They're all, you know, pressure ones and um, pressure for horse rider, owners, everyone. Uh, every inch of ground is uh, fought for over here. And um, you know, we've had a fantastic week. William Mullins, Challenge Gold Cup winning trainer on St. Patrick's Day. Many congratulations and thanks for speaking to Off the Ball. Thank you very much. Cheers. John, just before we hear from Paul Tennant, there is a real feeling from Willie Mullins. He doesn't get too high about the big winners. He doesn't get too low about the disappointments. He's first to point out that they brought a big team. There were some that uh, were put in there, didn't quite fire for him. He's won some big races, including the blue ribbon of the entire week. But Willie Mullins just looks at that as we take our winners, we take our losers and we move on. Yes, when he trained Abu Foto to win the first Gold Cup in 2019, I remember that day he was, we're going to, I'm going to disappear to London for a few days. Uh, and then they went down to, is it, is it Lachlan Bridge or Leyland Bridge? You'll be able to. Uh, Lachlan Bridge, wheel. yeah. Yeah, that, that's where Abu Foto was. So um, Florida Pearl was a brilliant horse back in the late 90s. He was, he was the superstar and he never won a Chelham Gold Cup. He was second in 2000. Now, maybe once again, the competition from the English back then was better. But Florida Pearl, not to win a Gold Cup, a brilliant, brilliant animal. And that, that's the way it goes. And, and, and then you have a horse like Album Photo, you wouldn't think is the most, it's, you know, it's, it, you're not thinking of Album Photo, who won two Gold Cups in maybe the same breath as Best Mate or Cotto Star. But Album Photo just won just as many Gold Cups as Cotto Star. So I think in 10 to 15 years' time, there'll be a reflection on how brilliant William Wollins has been. He's 66 years of age, and I don't mean to just throw that, but like, but he looks like he could go at this for another 20 years. Mm. Um, he's fitting well, and he just has this ability to be able to prime these horses to go uh, and deliver. And um, I, I remember watching, it was a TG Car uh, series they've been doing the last few weeks, uh, when Willie trained Hedgehunter in 2005 to win the Entry Grand National, there was a huge amount of emotion. But um, people have different ways of celebrating. And uh, I suppose when you're at the very, very top of your game, there's only one way to go. And maybe there's a degree of, OK, we just have to keep going here. Yeah, and that brings its own pressure, as Willie Mull mentioned about uh, Paul Townend uh, going out as the jockey on the best horse in the race today. Paul Townend was also speaking to John after the Gold Cup. Paul Townend, 
it's St. Patrick's Day, you're a proud Cork man and this is something special in the world in the Gold Cup. Yeah, brilliant day. Um, brilliant performance from the horse. Willie had him here in tip-top shape and uh, we got the rub of the green, I suppose, with um, fallers and things like that, but uh, a huge performance from the horse. He gallops, he jumps, he stays, he's got everything he want. Yeah, he's matured a lot. He's settled it this year um, much better. He was like to get on with it last year, but he's matured a lot. And, uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't know when when he's finished. You're on the morning of a Gold Cup. You're riding the favourite. Do you feel a bit more butterflies? Not really, to be honest. Every day when you're riding for Willie here, you have big rides, big pressure rides. And um, I had full faith in the horse, I suppose, which made it a bit easier. Talk to us about the rides, because obviously there's a little bit of risk coming from behind, but you felt you had plenty with him. Yeah, we didn't get a clean passage for the first circuit, um, but we got a bit of luck on the second one. Tell us how you're going to celebrate this. I'm going to Thurlis tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and after that? We'll see. We're busy weekend racing next week, but I'm sure we'll get a celebration somewhere. Always feels like a benefit, John, when it comes to some of these cards that are booked here at home on a Saturday on the back of Cheltenham, where Thurlis is going to have some connections tomorrow that have won some of the biggest races of the year across the week, and there they are going to that card. There is no break for them whatsoever. I think this is a different rhythm, Will, to horse racing, maybe compared to other sports. Um, I suppose Paul Tennant is working. So he's working at Cheltenham today. We all think of it as sport, but it's just a little bit of a different rhythm, whereas a lot of where big matches, the All-Ireland Final, you're building up for weeks and weeks. You're building up for the whole season to the one day. And then it's a finality to it. And then everybody, whatever, has their few days of, you know, enjoying themselves. Whereas I think with the horse racing, Paul Tennant would have gone in there. Like, it's funny, because I got him after the following race when he rode... Um, Allegory de Vassi and the horse looked like to win but then Impervious came past her up the hill so if he hadn't won the Gold Cup he probably would have been in a foul mood or whatever and just maybe kind of uh, presuming that but like it's every half an hour you're, you're on with a new connection a new owner they've got their expectations they've got a horse going for Cheltenham maybe for the first ever time and it is very much okay next 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 so for it to sink in it'll probably take a while for it to sink in especially if after the moment after you've you've, you've won the race you've itv you've yourself you've got press conferences you've all these things to do you're flying back to dublin tonight and then it'll probably be only in a week's time when you go okay I can breathe now. I can think about what happened here. And the person who could be sitting beside you in the weigh room could have had the most dreadful week in Cheltenham ever. Yeah, well, we even noticed on the TV coverage earlier. So Matt Chapman was trying to catch as many of the jockeys coming back in after the Gold Cup as possible. And Rachel Blackmore was going in to get ready for the next race. So it was very quick. It was kind of, Apple start, pulled up, horse is okay. Yeah, and then Rachel saying, yeah, i got to go and get ready because I'm back out in a few minutes' time. So it's amazing how quickly the conveyor belt goes around for these jockeys. Um, again, for Team Mullins, lossy mouth, uh, win. I mean, what a good start. One, two, three, four in the race in the Triumph Hurdle. Yes, and this horse was unlucky at Epperson last time. And they always felt that this was the best juvenile hurdle they, horse they had. And you always got to look at who the jockey is. And Paul Tennant is a stable jockey. So the fact that he's deciding to choose Lassie Mouth over Blood Destiny or Gata Marceau was a tip in itself. Lassie Mouth actually was quite free and buzzy, uh, even going to the third last, like tanking, uh, but still had the speed to, to finish a well clear of... Uh, I've got a Marceau two and a quarter lengths. Zenta was third. Um, that was the triumph hurdle. Uh, and actually, the, the home team had more winners today. They'd four to three. We'd 18 to 10 over the week. It was exactly the same will as last year. Yeah, and one of the home winners, it hadn't been the greatest week for Paul Nichols, but still a couple of winners on the board. And 18 to one shot coming home. Uh, stay away, Faye, in the Albert Bartle novices hurdle. Yes, uh, that was Harry Cobden riding that. A um, lot of horses from Ireland that were well kind of touted in the build-up, like Three Card Bragg and Corbett's Cross. This was a bizarre finish because Corbett's Cross was coming there with a chance to win on the inside under Mark Walsh. And the horse just ran out through the white guard of the hurdle, jinking Mark Walsh at the side door. So, uh, well, in contention. So it was like a kind of very nervy moment for Mark Walsh. He's okay, thankfully, but the horse just almost like saw something in the crowd and then just completely jinked and, and the jockey was at the, at the side door. So that's the, that's the madness of racing, that anything can happen. And it's a very dangerous sport. And it was stay away, Faye, that won, as you say, from a 150 to one outsider trained by Noel Mead and Mees, a Ford of the Fury, who was second, Paul Nolan's, Sandra Glegain in third. That is a difficult race to find a winner of. This is like a tough three-mile hurdle. Yeah, good news as well with Mark Walsh because it was a heavy enough fall that he took during it too. Good to hear that he's okay. I, I mean, before you leave Presby Park, what are the abiding memories from this week that are going to stick with you? Is it, again, a fantastic week for Rachel Blackmore and for Henry de Bromhead? Is it an Ergamines run? <laughs> what jumps out for you? I think there are three things. I'll probably do them in descending order. Um, well, the, the first thing is the uh, number three would be the Irish domination. 18-10 again, same as last year. 
we're in a very much a golden age of Irish trained horses at Cheltenham. And the, the sportsman's is in a very, very good place. Like, you've got Aidan O'Brien training winners around the world in the flash. You've got Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Henry de Bromhead. And, like, I was going through, there's nine different Irish trainers had winners this week, 12 different jockeys, uh, seven of them first-time festival winners. Ben Harvey, John Gleeson, Michael O'Sullivan, Liam McKenna, Pa King, and today, I'm uh, sorry, Darrell O'Keefe, and today Brian Hayes from Cork, his first festival winner on impervious 13 individual owners. So that's the first thing, the Irish domination. In descending order, order number two, the boring excellence of Willie Mullins and Paul Townend, mm. champion chase and urgement second year in a row, uh, third Gold Cup with uh, Galapon des Champs, the favourite, delivering consistently, turning up, winning, a game, next, what's next? And you can't take that for granted. And we really just have to laud Willie Mullins and Aidan O'Brien for the job they do for Irish racing, just putting us on the map and uh, in different countries. But number one, you got to say, that one hour between Constitution Hill's breathtaking display in the, in the champion hurdle. But then really, like horse racing is a minority sport. We can't forget that, right? I think it's in the Irish blood and we do like to go into the races and we do like following the stories of these jockeys and, and trainers and owners and going to the local tracks around the country. You know yourself, uh, Will, in the Midlands. But sometimes it's on the front page. Like it was in, in certain ways with John Gleeson doing his leaving search. That was a great story, a dream to share in the bumper. But... For that moment, to see Honeysuckle rally and win for the fourth festival in a row and to see Rachel Blackmore in so emotional at the, at, at, at when she crossed the line. And then the reception that Henry de Bromhead and the de Bromhead family got was just, you could really feel the love. You could really feel the love in the air and you could really feel the compassion towards Henry and his family after the passing of Jack last September. So I think that it was just one of the most goosebumps stuff that we shivered down the spine. It was... It was such a warm place to be uh, from a, for a sporting occasion to see that uh, love that was there for Henry. And I, I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll ever forget that. And uh, that's definitely the highlight of the week, I feel. I think, John, it was like a double love as well. As you mentioned, there was a lot of people rallying behind the De Bromhead family, and that was a lovely moment. A lot of people got affection for Honeysuckle. And I wonder if Honeysuckle's story became a little bit more interesting because she had waned a little bit. Because once upon a time, it was mayor of a lifetime. Is she ever going to be beaten? Then she takes a couple of defeats and she still has got her unbeaten record at Cheltenham. But there were plenty during the week that probably thought, let's just get her safely around and let her retire. Uh, but yet she produces that wonderful finish to win the race. I think as a result of maybe some of the adversity that Honeysuckle has had in the last while, it's maybe made her story even more interesting. Yes, and there was a film back in the day, decades ago, called National Velvet with Elizabeth Taylor uh, bringing the horse to the Grand National. And Rachel Blackmore has won the Grand National, the entry Grand National. She's won the Gold Cup in a blue tar. But Honeysuckle, I think, is the horse that really put her on the map and the horse she's probably been most associated with. And Honeysuckle, I really hope that they just parade her at Punchestown. It is our national hunt meeting in Ireland. I think that's important that they parade her. But I, I really hope now that they just give her a, a good retirement because you cannot top that. And the horse is um, temperamental. She's moody um, from an equine point of view. Um, they always talk about that, but she's just got so much guts. And to be unbeaten going into the season, as you say, but like the races she lost, she lost a race um, over two and a half miles in her opening opening run, but it was her first run of the season as, as, a, as a horse going on nine years of age. And then she lost to State Man, who was second in the champion hurdle. So there was no shame in defeat, but they were clever enough to say, let's go and try and give her maybe the best shot. And as you say... Uh, that was in the Maris hurdle, but it was just her resolution to overhaul Love and Wa up the up the run in and, and mar market. It was, it's these are these are the horses you're going you're going to be talking about in 15, 20 years time. You talk about Don Run, you talk about Isterback, you talk about Arkle, you talk about Hard Eustace, and now you talk about Honeysuckle. And Honeysuckle is a great champion. John, great stuff across the week. Thanks a million. Well, mind yourself, take care, and happy Patrick's Day.